Good morning, church. Welcome you today. Call to worship is from Isaiah uh, chapter 9. It says, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. The people who walked in darkness, well, that's us. We have seen deep darkness in the world around us. Uh, so we have come to search for the light. We want the light to shine on us this morning. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. A child is born for us. A son is given for all of us. We come to see the child that has been born. We come to gather in the glow of the stable. We come to sing with angels and wonder with the shepherds. We come to worship. We have come to worship. Worship the one who is born for us this day. Let's stand together. We'll open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that the light has come into our dark world. Lord, we thank you that we are carriers of the light for Christ Jesus lives within us by the Holy Spirit. We thank you that there is light in this place today. Lord, let it radiate throughout this sanctuary in every heart and in every life. So Lord, we lift our worship to King Jesus today. We lift our worship to the one who came and was born in a manger to be the savior of the world. Lord, receive the praises of your people today. We pray in your wonderful name. And all God's people said, amen. Let's worship together. Amen. Hallelujah. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. And the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. Oh, come let us adore him. Sing choirs of angels, sing in exaltation, sing all ye bright hosts of heaven above. Glory to God, all glory in the highest, oh come let us adore him. of announcements to share with you. First of all, coming up on Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock, we're going to be showing um, the docudrama called Why the Nativity. Snacks will be provided. And uh, speaking of food, next Sunday after service, we are having our Christmas lunch, Trasca chicken and garlic mashed potatoes and veggies and buns. And so uh, we're asking that you sign up. The sign up sheet is out there. And if you could bring along either side or dessert, that would be great. And so someone asked me, well, what do we bring? So, you know, I told you everything that is going to be here. So bring something that's not going to be here. All right. Hope that helps. We'll, we'll eat it all anyways. Uh, and with that in mind, we could use some help afterwards to set up some tables and chairs uh, downstairs. If you have a few minutes after church, we would appreciate that. Uh, just a reminder, Christmas Eve, we are having one service in the evening at 6 30 and so no morning service on that sunday as well offering plates are at the back you can uh, give by put placing in the offering or you can by email transfer at evangelchurch at bellnet.ca we'll let you remain seated as we continue to worship today amen silent night Holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant so 
morning who are really busy just take these few moments to be still may the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus may you find the peace of God to be something real in your heart this morning Jesus let's sing verse 3 silent night
You are the husband to the widow. You are the father to the fatherless. You are close. We can trust in you. Jesus. Jesus, I'm asking you to do some supernatural work this morning. I'm not sure exactly what's happening, Lord, but you are here and we are here. And we're sitting at your feet this morning and we're asking Lord God that you would meet the need. If you have a need this morning, I want you to just raise it up to the Lord this morning. Whatever need it is, just bring it to him this morning by a raised hand or just a quiet prayer, that's fine. But I want you to bring it to the Lord this morning. He knows what you need before you even ask him. His ear is not deaf to your cry. Even the quietest of whispers he hears. Even in imperfect prayer, he will answer. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask, Lord, that you would have your way. Answer prayers this morning. In Jesus' name, for financial needs, for relationship needs, for healing, Lord, to their body, mind, and spirit. You are able because you are here. You are the difference maker. So we'll sing this morning that it is well. And so I'm asking Lord God in the name of Jesus that it would be as we sing this morning that it would be so in Jesus' name. Just sing it in faith. Grand earth has quaked before Moved by the sound of his voice Seas that are shaken and hustered They can be calmed Can be calmed and broken from my ring He's in the boat with you Through it all, through it all My eyes are on you through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. It is well with me. Should Jesus. Verse 2. Far be it from me to not believe. Sing it, girls. Even when my eyes can see this mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. It is well, it is well. So let go, my soul, and trust in Him. The waves and winds still know. It is well. It is well. It is well. With my soul. With my soul. It is well. It Sing it in faith. Well. With my soul. 
the message of those uh, those past three songs we've been told to be silent and still and know that it is well in your soul um, the uh, the name of the the song that they kind of spun off of there is uh, peace like a river when peace like a river attendeth my way right be silent and still and have peace in God's presence. I remember in 2007, driving back from the hospital in London, they had just um, shared with me they had found a tumor in my chest. And that, um, that second song in the second set there came on the CD player in our van at the time. And it just said, be still. Be still. And God's presence was there and speaking to me at that time saying I just let me know he says Rob I've, I've got this you can you can have peace in the midst of this storm and I want you to do the same this morning just believe um, God has orchestrated this a time for you to be still in his presence to be silent but also to have a, a deep 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 inner peace I want us to pray for a young man, 28 years old, his name is Nathan, and he has a rare form of cancer, and he just needs prayer. They're not giving him really any hope at this point in time, and they want to send him off to the States for treatment because there's nothing they can do here, they're saying. Um, let's lift Nathan up this morning, and your requests as well that are on your hearts today. Um, just remember, um, a good friend of ours from the church, uh, Doug as well, who is, is not doing well, and just believe God to be with him in a special way right now. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the assurance that your spirit is giving us this morning, that in this moment we can be silent because Jesus is here. Hallelujah. We can be still because your Holy Spirit is in this place right now, speaking to hearts and lives. We can have a peace that passes understanding. Uh, Lord, even in the greatest storms of life, because God, you are greater than the storm. So Lord, we lift up everything that might be troubling us right now. We lay it at your feet and we receive, um, Lord, your supernatural strength. We receive your peace. We receive your purpose in all of this. And Lord, we also call out for you to intervene Lord, as only you can in these ways, Lord, for Nathan. Lord, we're going to pray for healing this morning and ask, Lord, that you would extend his life, Lord, just as you did mine. Lord, that you would raise him up and he would know that you are the one who did this. Lord, you would get all the honor. You would give all the glory. Let him sense your presence even as I did, Lord, in that van in 2007, Lord, right where he is right now. May he sense your presence. Or for Doug as well. Lord, lift him up, strengthen him, 
He has loved you and served you all these years. Lord, may he know that you are with him very near and dear at this time of his life, dear God. Lord, we rest right now in the peace and calmness and assurance of your presence today. And Lord, we'd ask that you would speak to our hearts through your word. Lord, even if it is a message that we've heard before, may there be something fresh today. May there be fresh manna for us. Lord, your children to feed off this morning. And we ask it in Jesus' name today. Amen. Amen. Let's get our Bibles out. Hold them high. Let's say this together. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're continuing on in our Christmas series. This morning's message is just simply entitled, Why Joseph? And so we're going to talk about how God uses ordinary people to accomplish extraordinary things. It's going to be the crux of the message this morning. Um, the goal of, of many people at some point in their lives is to someday be famous. Uh, celebrity endorsements influence the popularity of everything from breakfast cereal to sportswear. Uh, sometimes it even affects the elections of the officials in our land. Now in Joseph's day, men did not desire prestige so much, but rather a good reputation. The decision to stand by Mary and for God was, was not an easy choice for him to make. And we learn through his story that, that when we trust and when we obey God, he mysteriously unfolds his plan and his purpose for us. And in this case, for the whole world. Uh, he is sometimes referred to as the forgotten man of Christmas. Uh, Joseph, the, the man who was chosen to be the uh, adoptive father of our Lord, the one who would protect the infancy of the Savior of the world. Uh, in the word of God, uh, Joseph stands silent. He is spoken to, he is spoken about, but not a single syllable crosses his lips. At least it's not recorded for us in scripture. He is viewed by many as just a minor player, kind of an, an extra in this Christmas drama. Uh, we don't know what happened with Joseph. His role in Act 1 is crucial, and we expect to see him in the rest of the drama. But with the exception of the, a short scene with 12-year-old Jesus in Jerusalem, he never reappears. And so the rest of his life is, is left to speculation, and we are left with our questions. According to Matthew's genealogy, Joseph was a potential king, a person of royal blood. Yet we know very little about him. He appears on the scene for a moment and, and then he disappears. Judging from Mary's sacrifice of two turtle doves, we may assume that um, he was probably a poor man. We do know he was a carpenter and, and as such must have probably been a, a simple and very practical man. He would have liked the feel of wood and stone, the, the satisfaction of, of building something that was sound and something that was useful. We can imagine that, like Mary, he envisioned an orderly and ordinary life. He would pursue his craft and maintain a good name in the community. He would attend synagogue with his family that he raised. You should know that in Jewish culture, unlike our own, the groom was the focus of the wedding. And Joseph must have looked forward to the celebration and the, the simple life 
that would follow, of, of taking Mary into his household, of having children. One might say the, the carpenter was fashioning a well-constructed life. See what I did there? <laughs> but, but after the angel Gabriel told Mary that, that she would uh, conceive by means of the Holy Spirit and, and bear the Messiah, Mary left town and, and didn't tell Joseph about her visit uh, from the angel. And, and Luke 1, 39 to 40 records this. It says, a few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea in the town of Zechariah, where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. Then Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women and your child is blessed. You are blessed because you believe the Lord would do what he said. So we read of Joseph's discovery of Mary's baby in Matthew 1.18. It says, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so though engaged, there had been no physical union. Yet here is Mary with child. But how do you explain that? It is probable that even her parents neither understood nor accepted her story. But according to Matthew 1.18, uh, the betrothal agreement had been signed. Dowry gifts had been given. Friends and relatives knew of the couple's engagements. And it's then that Joseph learns of Mary's baby. And, and so Joseph now has this dilemma over Mary's baby. Matthew 1.19 says, Joseph, uh, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to uh, disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. Joseph desired to, to shield Mary from public shame and had decided to, to quietly divorce her. Perhaps he concluded that, that Mary had committed adultery, but she was a godly woman and, and would have never violated her purity and their engagement. Maybe she had been raped, but she would have told Joseph, you would think. A third option was that Mary had been chosen by God to be the mother of the Messiah, just as she had said. And Joseph was a devout man. He was a Hebrew, and, and surely he pondered the fact that the Messiah was to be born of the house of David. So what could he do? Not to divorce Mary might represent failure to uphold the law. But to dismiss her publicly was unthinkable. He did not know for sure if she was guilty or innocent. He was in a position of not being able to condemn her or fully justify her pregnancy. So he decided to secretly divorce her. God had a special vessel in this noble Hebrew woman. Perhaps Joseph did not want to interfere with God's mysterious purposes. So he decided to set Mary aside. Was this what he had to do to be obedient to God? Joseph was willing to give up the woman that he so dearly loved. And then Joseph has a dream. In Matthew 1.20 we read, As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. What a relief those words must have been to Joseph. When the angel said, Joseph, son of David, we see God's prophetic word being fulfilled and his providence being carried forth that this child should be of the lineage of David. Though Joseph was not Jesus' physical father, by his marriage to Mary, he would give Jesus the, the true legal status because Joseph was a descendant of King David. The angel then explained that Joseph uh, should have no hesitation in taking Mary to be his wife because her pregnancy was of the Holy Spirit. Joseph now understood for sure that the whole matter had been orchestrated by the Lord. 
We read in Matthew 121 that the Lord further instructed Joseph that the child's name would be Jesus, for he would save his people from their sins. And verse 25 states, Joseph named him Jesus, showing his obedience to God. Matthew goes on to reveal that Jesus' virgin birth fulfilled what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet Isaiah. He says, look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Notice the, the article before the word virgin. He did not speak of a virgin. He spoke of the virgin, the virgin married. Both Isaiah and Matthew point to a very specific person. And so Joseph uh, has a decision to make about Mary's baby. In Matthew 1, 24 and 25, says, When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. And he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And again, Joseph named him Jesus. What happened in Joseph's life illustrates what often happens in ours. Author and pastor Max Licato, he describes Joseph as being caught between what God says and what makes sense. Have you ever been caught there between what God says and what makes sense? Have you done what you believe God asked you to do only to wonder if it was really him that was speaking to you in the first place? Perhaps you've asked God if you were on the right road. Did you make a wrong turn somewhere along the way? Things haven't turned out quite like you envisioned that they should in your service to him. If that is you, let me encourage you to do what Joseph did. He obeyed anyways. He obeyed as best he could with the knowledge that he had been given. Joseph didn't let his uh, confusion disrupt his obedience. He, he didn't know everything, but he did know what he knew. As it turned out, God made sure that everything in his plan would be carried out to the tiniest detail because the purity of Jesus had to be protected. This baby must doubtless be the son of the Holy Spirit and not the son of Joseph. In chapter 1 of his gospel, Matthew reiterates this reality very clearly. Verse 18, we read this. Before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20 says, For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Verse 23 says, look, a virgin will conceive a child. Again, verse 25 says, he, Joseph, did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. Jesus was the child of Almighty God, conceived in Mary by the Holy Spirit. As for Joseph, he was chosen by God to be Jesus' adoptive father, and as such, he played a, a magnificent role in this whole drama. But the question is, why Joseph? To fulfill God's plan, God needed a carpenter. He needed a man who was sturdy and stable and practical, yet sensitive to the voice of God. He needed one who would stand quietly with a, a young virgin who might have seemed the object of ridicule, yet who carried in her womb the hope of the world. Joseph was strong but compassionate. He was able to lead the tiring expedition to Bethlehem and to the stable to, to love and encourage the mother of Christ. Joseph, as the man of the house, was the teacher to give Jesus his first lessons in the laws of God. In Jerusalem, when the boy was 12 and it became evident that his first allegiance must be to another father, Joseph was the man to humbly and silently step back and let God step forward. Amazingly, Joseph never spoke a word in the Christmas story, but what he did speaks volumes to all of us. Here's the crux of my message today. One of the lessons that comes from the life of Joseph is this, that the most important thing in the whole world can happen to the least important people in the world. That the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords can take up residence in the most ordinary of lives. That the greatest somebody who ever lived can come to nobodies like Joseph and Mary and like you 
and like me. Like Joseph, we can't see the whole picture. And just like Joseph, our task is to see that Jesus is brought into our part of the world. Like Joseph, we have to choose to obey or disobey. Joseph obeyed, and God used him to change the world. Isn't this the very attitude that God requires of each one of us? Lord God, just tell me what to do, and I'll do it. I'll be obedient anytime, any place, anywhere, anything. Lord God, I don't understand it, and it doesn't make sense as far as I know. It's never happened before in the history of the world. But if you say it, I'll do it. There was a, a British student, and he was having a good time in England. He was studying engineering. And in his spare time, he was riding his motorcycle all over the English countryside. And a cold and rainy night, he crashed his motorcycle in a remote section of England, and he lay injured on the road for many hours. And by the time he was hospitalized, pneumonia had set in, and the doctors gave him just two weeks to live. And during those two weeks, a, a letter arrived from his father, who was a missionary in Angola. The letter, written many months before the accident, finally arrived by ship. The young man opened the letter and read his father's first words. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Those words so stabbed his heart that he gathered up his strength and he pulled himself out of bed and he knelt down to pray. He said, Lord, you have won. I now own you as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And Lord, if you will heal my body, I will serve you anywhere, anytime, at any cost. The boy recovered. He went on to become a powerful pastor and evangelist. Now with the Lord, perhaps you've heard of him, his name is Stephen Olford. God brought him into a position of significant usefulness through the tragedy of an accident, but most of all through his willingness to say, anywhere, anytime, at any cost. That's essentially what Jesus said when asked, was asked to come to earth as our Savior. Father God, anywhere, anytime, at any cost. Reflecting on the prophetic words of Psalm 47, 7 and 8. It says, Then I said, Look, I have come. As is written about me in the scriptures, I take joy in doing your will, my God, for your instructions are written on my heart. We read that reiterated in Hebrews 10, 7 in the New Testament. Mary echoed the same commitment to God after the angel announced that, that she would give birth to the Savior of the world. In Luke 1, 38, she says, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. In other words, anywhere, anytime, at any cost. When Joseph received the angel's message, he, he walked away from what common sense told him to do. And he said to God, anywhere, anytime, any cost. Are you willing to say, Lord, I will serve you anywhere, anytime, at any cost? Long ago, that was the road to Bethlehem. Today, it is the road to victory in the life of every true believer of Jesus Christ. It's a happy day when we recognize that we don't have to completely understand everything that God is doing in order to obey. God reserves the right to give us what we need to know as we need to know it and reveal the rest in due time even if it's on the other side of glory. One author suggests what um, Joseph's prayer might have sounded like outside Bethlehem's stable. This isn't the way I planned it, God. Not at all. My child being born in a stable, this isn't the way I thought it would be. A cave with sheep and donkeys and hay and straw. My wife giving birth with only the stars to hear her pain. This isn't at all what I imagined. 
You know, I imagined family, I imagined grandmothers, I imagined neighbors clustered outside the door and, and friends standing at my side. I imagined the house erupting with the first cry of the infant, slaps on the back, loud laughter, jubilation. That's how I thought it would be. The midwife would hand me my child and all the people would applaud. Mary would rest and we would celebrate. All Nazareth would celebrate. But now, Nazareth is five days journey away. And here we are in a sheep pasture. Who will celebrate with us? The sheep? The shepherds? Stars? This doesn't seem right. What kind of husband am I? I provide no midwife to aid my wife. No bed to rest her back. Her pillow is a blanket from my donkey. My house for her is a shed of hay and straw. The smell is bad. The, the animals are loud. Why, I even smell like a shepherd myself. Did I miss something? Did I, God? When you sent the angel and spoke of a son being born, this, this isn't what I pictured. I envisioned Jerusalem and the, the temple and the priests and the people gathered to watch. A, a pageant, perhaps. A parade, a banquet, at least. I mean, this is the Messiah. Or, if not born in Jerusalem, how about Nazareth? Wouldn't Nazareth have been better? At least there I have my house and I have my business. Out here, what do I have? A weary mule, a stack of firewood, a pot of warm water. This is not the way I wanted it to be. This is not what I wanted for my son. Oh my, I did it again. I did it again, didn't I, Father? I don't mean to do that. It's just that I forget. He's not my son. He's yours. The child is yours. The plan is yours. The idea is yours. And forgive me for asking, but is this how God enters the world? The coming of the angel, I accepted. The, the questions people asked about the pregnancy, I can tolerate. The trip to Bethlehem, fine. But why a birth in a stable, God? Any minute now, Mary will give birth. Not to a child, but to the Messiah. Not to an infant, but to God. That's what the angel said. That's what Mary believes. And God, my God, that's what I want to believe. But surely you can understand, it's not easy. It seems so, so, so bizarre. I'm unaccustomed to such strangeness. God, I'm a carpenter. I make things fit. I square off the edges. I follow the plumb line. I measure twice before I cut once. <laughs> Surprises are not a friend of a builder. I like to know the plan. I like to see the plan before I begin. But this time, I'm not the builder, am I? This time, I'm a tool. I am a hammer in your grip, a nail between your fingers, a, a chisel in your hands. This project is yours, not mine. I guess it's foolish of me to question you. Forgive my struggling. Trust doesn't come easy to me, God. But you never said it would be easy, did you? One final thing, Father. The angel you sent? Any chance you could send another? If not an angel, maybe a person? I don't know anyone around here, and some company would be nice. Maybe the innkeeper or a traveler? Even a shepherd would do. God is still looking for Joseph's today. Men and women who believe that God is not through with this world. He's looking for common people who are willing to serve an uncommon God. Will you be that kind of person? Will you obey even when you don't understand? Think of what unfolded from the obedience of Joseph, Mary, and the Lord. It has unfolded right into our hearts today and made it possible for me to say that, that if you have never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can do that today because of what Jesus and Mary and Joseph did as part of the drama of redemption to make salvation available to every person. 
Joseph and Mary could not possibly have known the eternal things that would happen from their obedience. But thank God they obeyed. Most of all, thank God for his indescribable gift, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came to be our Savior. I'll invite the worship team to come back. Let's bow our heads this morning. Just before we pray, I want to ask this morning if there's anyone that's here today or listening online and say, I hear that part about Jesus saving us from our sins. And I've never asked him to save me from mine. But today you can do that. It's the reason that he came, to offer you forgiveness, to welcome you into his family, to fill you with his Holy Spirit give you an abundant life, life to the full, both now and for all of eternity. And if you just feel the Holy Spirit stirring your heart this morning, you say, I want to respond to what Jesus did for me. Why don't you just raise your hand right where you are. Contact me, send me an email. If you're watching online, I am making that decision today. I'm receiving this wonderful, wonderful offer of salvation this Christmas season. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the obedience of your Son. His willingness to come, to be born in a manger, a young couple, Mary and Joseph, who also said yes to you. Well, we thank you for the reminder that you still use common people to carry out your plan. And Lord, we know very well that's all that we are. But Lord, we know that when your spirit resides within us, Lord, there's something different about us. We are children of the King. We are your ambassadors. So, Lord, we're listening for your instructions to us. Lord, maybe we've already said yes to you. But, Lord, the way things have turned out just seem a little bit confusing. And, Lord, we just ask for your reassurance today in our hearts that, Lord, you're still in the midst of all of this. And you're still carrying out your perfect plan. That none of this is taking you by surprise. And that, Lord, we're still on the right course. So, Lord, in our humanness as best we can, we say, anywhere, anytime, anything, any cost. And we lay our lives before you. And we just say, we're your humble servants today. And we want to do what we can to extend your kingdom. We want to do what we can to bring light into a dark world. So, Lord, in this Christmas season, we offer ourselves up afresh and anew to you, Lord, to be your obedient servants, just like Joseph was and Mary was. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. We're going to close with this song. It's called Oceans, but it's really about stepping out on faith, regardless of what God asks us to do. Call me out upon the waters, great and unknown, where fate may fail. There I find you in the mystery, and oceans deep, my faith will stand.
Your grace abounds. Your grace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed. You won't start now. I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. I am yours. You are my spirit. Lead me where my trust is with. Borders. May walk upon the waters wherever you would call me and take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. May walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. trust you Jesus we put our faith in you Lord Jesus we know that you have everything under control we know that your plans are perfect we will trust in your name and in your plan Lord Jesus God give us faith this morning to believe again to trust in you and to say whatever you decide whatever you say goes wherever you call us to be we will be lord jesus just have your way in this place and as we celebrate you coming and as we celebrate your birth lord jesus we ask that lord you would have your way in us spirit lead me where my trust is without borders me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me, take me deeper than my feet could ever want. Make this your prayer this morning. My, my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. I will call upon your name. Keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours. You are mine. One more time. I am yours. Sing it like you mean it. You are mine. This morning, may you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. God bless you as you leave today. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my 
trusts with the borders may walk upon the waters wherever you would call me take me deeper than my feet could ever wander my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my savior 